Well, the Lord be with you. Good morning, afternoon or evening, really, uh, anytime and from anywhere that you are joining us for worship today, uh, you are welcome. And if this is your first time to join us for worship here at St. Peter's and in your home, then you are especially welcome. Today is the fourth Sunday after Trinity, which may not mean much to you, but to us it's St. Peter's Day. It's that day when we remember and we actually celebrate uh, St. Peter. Now, I don't know if he would have called himself a saint, but we definitely seek to follow his example. And as we'll hear later on in our Bible readings, that example is one of faith. It's one of, of obeying Jesus, of following what he says, even when it sounds strange and is really goes against received wisdom. Well, as we begin our worship, why don't we start with a prayer, a prayer of preparation, a prayer that helps us put our hearts, put our heads in the right place. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, our first hymn really is a request to God to give us that heart for Him. I know we are apart, but in our homes we can join our voices together and let's sing to our God as we begin. You know, as we gather for worship today in our homes and here in St. Peter's, uh, it's important that we remember uh, Peter himself and his example. The fact that, you know, at the Last Supper, that final meal with Jesus and his friends, when Christ came around and, and, and washed each person's feet individually, he came to Peter. And what did Peter do? Peter said, oh, no, not me, Lord, don't wash my feet. But what did Jesus say? He said this, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part in me. And Peter's response is, well, Lord, not just my feet, but my whole body. Then you just have to love Peter. It's all or nothing really with Peter. As we now come before the Lord in confession, let us call to mind our own sins and those things which we need the Lord to wash away from us. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, is, one, is the only Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. 
And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. And there is no commandment greater than these. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets, literally hang. And so let us confess our sins. Let's call them to mind and confess them now in penitence, in a real, true, sorrowful heart and faith. Together we pray. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and we have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And in your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're now going to sing and celebrate that forgiveness in the words of the Gloria. Collect for St. Peter's Day. Almighty God, who inspired your Apostle St. Peter to confess Jesus as Christ and Son of the living God, build up your church upon this rock that in unity and peace it may proclaim one truth and follow one Lord, your Son, our Savior Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, we're now going to transition to a time in God's Word, in the Scripture. Um, Our first reading is actually written in the first epistle, that first letter of Peter. It can can be found in chapter 2, beginning in verse It says there, As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, 
are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in Him will never, no, not ever, be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Beginning in the 21st chapter of the first verse, it says this. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. And it happened this way. Simon Peter Thomas, also known as Didymus, uh, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Well, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. And so they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Well, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. And he called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, well, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Well, then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord. He wrapped his outer garment round him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. And the other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred meters. And when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish already on it and some bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now Martin is going to come and, and speak to us. Thank you, Josh. Uh, hello, everyone. Shall we pray as we come to reflect on that scripture? Lord, we do thank you for your word. Thank you for those first disciples in that boat who heard the voice of Jesus and acted upon it. And we pray now that we would hear your voice and act upon it. For we ask in his name and for his glory. Amen. I wonder if you could think back over the last three months that we've been in lockdown. And I wonder what for you uh, would be your lockdown highs and your lockdown lows. Maybe those things which you've thought, wow, I just never anticipated that. That's been a really unexpected blessing. And then those things which you've thought, whoa, this has been really tough. This has been really tough. What for you would be the highs and the lows of lockdown? I know for me, some of my highs, well, some of them would be little things. I know like many people, um, I've seen nature in a new way. Uh, we have breakfast, sometimes our evening meal in our conservatory. And I've just been amazed by the number of birds that we've seen in our garden and the bird song, which we've heard in ways I've not noticed before. I mean, there's no aeroplanes flying overhead uh, for a start. We've seen robins and wrens. Uh, there was a lesser spotted woodpecker in the garden the other day. We saw a green woodpecker. They're quite rare, fly across the garden. Uh, that's just been a, a delight to us uh, most mornings and some uh, evenings evenings too. Um, I've had more time with the children. I've watched them grow up uh, in new ways and, and grown together the time that we've had uh, as a family as they've been uh, schooling from home. And then there's memorable things like we've, we've camped out in the garden uh, and things like that would have been some of my highs. And then some of my lows. Well, I'm sure like many of you, I'm not the only person who at times has just found it really difficult to get to sleep or I've woken up at four o'clock in the morning and my head just buzzing trying to make sense of what's going on and compute what needs to be done and, and manage change and how uh, difficult that has at times been or 
times when I've woken up and woken up just feeling tired. You know that feeling when you wake up in the morning, you think, I feel tired first thing at the start of the day. Some of the pressures of isolation, just being shut in and, and not seeing folk. Maybe some of your highs and lows would be similar. Uh, perhaps for you, uh, they would be really different. But just think for a moment, what would they be? But I wonder as we begin to emerge from lockdown, um, equally, that's been a very different experience for us. I wonder if you've begun thinking, well, what, what is going to be different? What needs to be different? Uh, you may have read that government survey, which uh, I think it was taken back in May, but said only 9% of people wanted things to go back uh, to they were, the way they were previously. Uh, memorably, the Archbishop of Canterbury said in his Easter Day sermon, we cannot be content to go back to what was before as if all is normal. There needs to be a resurrection to our common life. Uh, on a newsletter that I emailed round to the parish last weekend, um, uh, many of you will have received that. I put four questions, which I know I've used and have been using with others to help us think this through. They were these. What have you gained during lockdown but would be happy to lose as it eases? Uh, what have you gained but would want to keep? What have you lost and don't want back? What have you lost and do want to have back? I don't know if you've been able to do that, that little uh, four square grid but let me encourage you just to think through those four questions dig it out and uh, think on them yourself the scripture that uh, Josh read for us earlier particularly the gospel reading from John 21 it's one that I have been drawn to myself as I've been trying to think about this and it is appropriate uh, Monday was St Peter's Day we would be celebrating it if we were here together in church today the text obviously includes the Apostle Peter and as a Peter of Peter's story, or even Jesus' story, it's a delightful but very simple story. Um, it happens after Jesus' death and resurrection. The disciples are still trying to work out what that means. They return to Galilee. We hear they're out fishing all night in a boat but catch nothing. Early in the morning, they see Jesus. They recognise Jesus on the shore. He tells them to cast their net on the right side of the boat. They do, and they catch a load of fish, 153 in total. Jesus then cooks breakfast for them uh, when they meet him on the shore. It's a great story, but I'm sure it's there in the Bible to make us think more deeply as well. It is laden uh, with ideas and symbolic imagery. The disciples, when we join them in that episode, are in a place themselves of great uncertainty and they're really confused. They're still trying to work out what on earth Jesus' death and resurrection means for them. Uh, some, some commentators are quite kind to them and say, well, at least they've done what Jesus told them. They've gone to Galilee and therefore unsure what they're meant to do. They, they, they go fishing, they fill their time and after all, they need something to eat. Other commentators are a bit more critical of them. Uh, they suggest that uncertain and unsure, they just default to what they used to do previously. They were fishermen, so they go back to doing what they were previously uh, quite good at. They simply go back to work, um, going into that which they were comfortable and familiar with, just as they did before. I guess the truth is probably somewhere in the middle, in that mix in that same mix of our own highs and lows, uncertainties and efforts to get things right. John tells us that they were fishing all night. Practically, that is when some people go out fishing, but in John's gospel, uh, the idea of night versus day, dark versus light is really a very powerful one indeed. They are still somewhat in the dark uh, in this episode and they catch no fish. And into that darkness, dawn breaks. Jesus reveals something of his resurrected self to them and he shows them something new. Two things happen. Uh, they recognise who Jesus is. They see him on the shore. John says, it is the Lord. And they hear what Jesus tells them to do, to cast their nets on the right side of the boat. And characteristically, it's John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, who relationally recognises Jesus, and it's Peter, who as always is impetuous, jumps to action and does what Jesus tells him to do. Now, together, we need to do both of those things, hear Jesus' voice and uh, act upon it, do what he says. 
And in the way this story delightfully unfolds, the point is clear. The disciples need to do something differently. They need the word of Jesus to cast their nets on the other side of the boat in order to bring in that great catch of fish. To experience the new thing that Jesus, by his resurrection, is bringing to them, they do need to stop doing what they were doing previously, fishing in the dark on the left side of the boat, and do what Jesus tells them to do. Uh, At dawn, cast their net on the right side of the boat. They couldn't just do the same thing in the same old way, their own way. They did have to hear what Jesus said to them in order to catch fish. As I said, they had to stop fishing as they were and start fishing as Jesus instructed them. Now, all sorts of novel and bizarre ideas have been set forward as to why there are 153 fish. You can look them up, explore them if you want to. My preference is simply that they were so amazed by the number of fish that they caught that someone said, wow, let's count them and see how many there were. And there just happened to be 153. But the main point is obvious, isn't it? There were lots compared to none previously during their nighttime fishing. What they could not do at night on their own, they could do with Jesus. As his resurrection dawned upon them, they saw who he was and heard his voice speaking to them. Um, It was a different future. It was more fruitful. I've often wondered, is there a Is there a word more fishful? I don't know, but it was fruitful, wasn't it? Uh, When they did what he said before them. It's what the Archbishop of Canterbury, I think, was getting at when he said, we cannot be content to go back to what was before as if all is normal. There needs to be a resurrection, something new in our common life together. And that's a challenge for our own lives, isn't it? To hear the voice of Jesus and to act upon it, not to go back to doing all that we were doing previously, but to say, how do we be the people of God, obedient to Jesus, as more of his resurrection life dawns upon us and as he leads us into what he has for us? Particularly, of course, if our task is to catch fish, not to enjoy a night out with our friends in a boat on a lake, but to catch fish. Remember, it was Peter who was first called by Jesus and told that he would become a fisher of men. He would catch from then on people, bringing them into God's kingdom, into a relationship with God as followers of Jesus. So yes, the disciples are wonderfully fed themselves by Jesus. He, it's a great picture of gathering with Jesus on the beach and sharing a meal, yes. But actually the picture of them catching fish is surely one that Jesus wants his disciples to grow into understanding that they would be those through whom others come into God's kingdom and experience a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And so if we're to respond to Jesus's word and work out what it means to be his faithful people, in a sense, in the future that lies before us, we need to work out what things we need to stop doing. We need to recognise Jesus as Lord and listen to his voice and hear what he's telling us to do, that we might, metaphorically speaking, cast our nets on the right side of the boat and bring in a great catch of fish. So as I finish, you might just for a moment pause and think what that means for your own individual life. And together we will work out what it means for us as a church in our life together as we seek to be fruitful, fishful, for Jesus in whatever the future holds for the church in Heswell. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Martin. Shall we respond now in the words of the Apostle Creed? Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
Do you believe and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, let's turn now to prayer. Let us pray. Father God, I ask that you would make us fruitful, even fishful for you. God, both in our own lives personally and in our congregational life here at St. Peter's. Lord, I ask that you would help us to reflect on those four questions which Martin has put to us what we want to keep and what we don't want any longer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray now for your church, for our archbishops, Lord, as Archbishop Justin seeks to bring together our society, to re-evaluate its underpinnings. Oh, pray for him, help him, and not only him, but all of our bishops, all of our leaders. Lord, each and every one of us, as you together, well, really, as you build us together, Lord, as your living body, built on your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I would pray for this planet, for this place which you created for your glory, for our enjoyment. We thank you for uh, what Martin has shared about just the, the kind of newness in in life around us that we see, that we can observe through this time of lockdown. From the birds in our gardens to uh, that that sort of silence in the air. God, we thank you for that. We are so deeply sorry for the ways in which we have failed to, to really care for, to curate, Lord, this planet, this creation which you gave to us to enjoy and to take care of. And as we go forward, as, we, as lockdown continues to ease, and we look forward uh, to this weekend and, and what's beyond in July and August and the summer and on into the autumn, I pray, God, that you would continue to inspire your church. Lord, as our colleague said, with one voice declaring your truth, that we may indeed be fruitful. Lord, fill our net. Show us how to fish, Father. We confess to you our own weakness and inability to accomplish your will for us. God, just show us the ways in which we need to to come to you afresh. So many aspects of our life, or life as as we knew it really, uh, just really crumble around us. Give us hope, certainty for the future. Help us to build our lives in the life of this church on you, our cornerstone. Now we pray 
uh, for the countries of um, South America, uh, some of those nations that could potentially be bankrupt through the coronavirus crisis. We pray for the United States, who just this past week experienced four new daily highs in, in COVID cases. We pray, Lord, against the just the the, un, the risk of of un, like riots and social unrest over the summer. We've already seen in the states and and pockets of here in in UK. Lord, bring peace. As the underpinnings of our society are challenged. May we find new stability in you. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, at this time, we remember those who are unwell, those known only to us and to our home. And in a moment of silence, let us bring them to mind. Lord, we want to uh, bring before your throne of grace, particularly, Lord, today, Mark, John, and Evelyn. Close to them. Sustain them and their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we're now going to transition from a time in God's Word to a time at His table. And as we make that transition, uh, why don't we join our voices together and sing our second
Amen. Amen. Well, particularly during lockdown, it's important that we remember the peace that we have with one another and with God through what He's done uh, with His Son, Jesus Christ. It was a peace which Peter himself knew, particularly at that last meal that he had with, with Jesus and his friends. When Jesus came into the room, peace be with you. And, and even after uh, his resurrection, again, Jesus said, peace be with you. And so the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Maybe perhaps in your own home with those sitting around you now, you could just exchange a, a sign uh, of the peace. Well, let us now come to the Lord's table to remember what He's done for us. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is both our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For He is your living Word, and through Him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through Him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving Him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised Him from the dead and exalted Him to your right hand on high. And through Him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving Spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I'll accept our praise as Heavenly Father through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow His example and obey His command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us His body and His blood, who in the same night that He was betrayed, took bread and He gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to His disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You know, in the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember this, His rather offering of Himself, made once for all upon the cross, and we proclaim His mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And we look for the coming of Your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, Your Son, our Lord. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Accept through Him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of Your divine majesty, renew us by Your Spirit, inspire us with Your love, and unite us in the body of Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Him and with Him and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in heaven and earth, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen.
And so, as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we break this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until He comes again. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Right, well, thank you very much for uh, joining us for our worship on this, the fourth Sunday um, after Trinity. St. Peter's Day, that day in which we remember uh, Peter the Rock, or perhaps I think he probably actually thought of himself as a pebble, uh, which is probably why we remember him so well, that humility of heart. A few items of news. We've got a new website. Uh, If you haven't clicked on that yet or gone there, uh, do so. Uh, See what's up there. Uh, It's absolutely fantastic, and a huge, huge thank you to everyone who's worked so hard to put that together. Uh, Go ahead and check that out this week. Uh, We are open for private prayer and soon to be open for public prayer, which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, St. Peter's, the building down here, uh, which we are in today, uh, is open Monday to Friday, 9.30 to noon, uh, thereabouts, uh, for private individual prayer. Uh, And the Good Shepherd is also opening this Monday and this Friday for private prayer from 11 to 1. So you can drop in there or come down here if you just fancy just a break, really, a time just by yourself uh, with the Lord in personal prayer. This Sunday coming up, we uh, have some great news. We are able to open the doors of the church buildings uh, for public prayer, and we're doing so down here at St. Peter's this Sunday at, what is it, the 5th, isn't it? Sunday the 4th? 12th! It's the 12th, right. Sunday the, This Sunday, everything's normal. This Sunday, everything's normal. Sunday the 12th, we are opening our doors down here at St. Peter's at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and 11 a.m. for a time of, three times rather, of public prayer. Uh, We'll be absolutely, it'll be so good to get together, to pray together. We're going to use some of the uh, Psalms uh, as we really just kind of seek to come back together as a a congregation in in the building here. Now, we do just ask that you would, uh, it's not necessarily a ticketed event, but that you would uh, let us know if you are coming. You can do that on Church Suite. If you haven't yet signed up the Church Suite, why don't you do that this week? Or you can give the, uh, the Parish Center a call and just let them know that you uh, will be joining us and for which service you'd like to join us. Again, those times are 9, 10, and 11 on Sunday the 12th. Now, 
You may be wondering what's going to happen with our pre-recorded worship and with our live worship on Facebook on Sundays. Both those things will continue as normal. So you will be able to have this pre-recorded service as well as our 1030 uh, live service on Facebook. So yeah, by all means, continue to, uh, to attend those in your home as, as well. And we look forward to later this summer kind of bringing those into the church building and what on, in the world that's going to look like. Please pray for us. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's enough news. Again, thank you for joining us for our worship today. It's been an absolute joy to, to gather together here and in your home. Should we pray? The peace of God which passes all understanding. Lord, give us that peace. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in that peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.